Good afternoon, men. OG Silverback here. And the uh, topic I want to discuss today is how to stop being a doormat to women. <clears throat> Before I get started, I wanted to give a shout out to my new subscribers, and I appreciate your requests for videos. So um, I actually take those into consideration. Also, the people that email me. And I'm doing research to give you the best information available. Um, not just based on my research, but also life experience and talking to <clears throat> other men that I respect and admire and look up to. So getting into today's um, topic of discussion, how to stop being a doormat to women. I think it comes down to basically a few core concepts. <clears throat> and the first concept is you have to, we have to agree upon definitions so we have a point of reference so that as we have these discussions we can um, have common words that we understand the meaning to. So the first of these words I want to cover with you guys is the word simp. And what is a simp? A simp is a guy who basically kowtows to women. <clears throat> He's a doormat like we talked about. And he gives a woman all the power because he lives in a world of scarcity where he feels like, you know, this is the only woman that he's ever going to have that is attracted to him or that he can garner her attention, right? <clears throat> so he's a simp. Another common word that we all agree upon is a wimp. A wimp is a guy who has no backbone, no substance to himself, no character, no boundaries, which is a bad thing, right? Nobody wants to be mistreated or taken advantage of. <clears throat> and just so we're clear, guys, even the men that are in those type of relationships or have that paradigm, they don't really want to be there either. It's just their way of, um, it's a knee-jerk reaction so that they are not alone as they look to satisfy their manly needs to penetrate a woman and to experience her soft, wet warmness, right? We all have that innate need. Um, another one is I want to use is a chump. So basically a chump is street vernacular for a guy who gets played by women. And I'll give you an example of a chump. So when I was working in the high tech industry, and just so you know guys, it's mostly dominated by males, engineers. Very logical guys, very smart, very linear thinking individuals. But just so we're clear, most intelligent men are not very successful with women. And I have another video on that, <clears throat> so I'm not going to elaborate on it here. But work in an environment with a really lot of smart engineers, made a lot of money. But, you know, they didn't really dress that great or have a social sense because most um, engineer types are more like loners, introverts. So they, they work very good and... Um, isolated situations they don't really have a big social social circle or social group that they associate with right but they're good dudes overall like I, these are the kind of guys that I would um, if my sister wasn't married I would very gladly introduce my sister to one of these guys they're good stand-up guys <clears throat> but uh, their lack of social intelligence or um, social acuity which is like any muscle if you don't socialize a lot or you're not innately like an extrovert then you have to force yourself to socialize regularly so you can develop the muscles of into an emotional intelligence social intelligence social interactions you know what's appropriate to say and do the flow of conversation all these things you can only learn from experience you can't read a book on it I mean you can read a book but you're not going to really master the concepts and <clears throat> have a full grasp of it because it's one of those things it's like reading a book on playing basketball yeah you can understand the fundamentals the theory theoretical concepts right but until you actually get a ball in your hand and you dribble it around and you put it behind your back in between your legs you finger roll it you really don't have ownership right <clears throat> so anyway a lot of these engineers made well over six figures had their own houses discretionary income in the bank, life insurance, paid their taxes. I mean, all the, the stuff, the American dream that we are sold and 
high school and college, right? So I'm going to make up these names here. So if there's any coincidence, if any of my friends or acquaintances are listening, it's just a coincidence. <clears throat> but we're going to have Bob and Fred. Bob's a hardworking guy, works in the cubicle next to me. He's always on time, never late, works long hours into the night. Always brings his projects in on time. He's a go around good dude, very awesome engineer. So there's a receptionist. So just so you know, in these high tech companies, the the they, they don't, I'm not going to say they only hire hot girls, but what I'm saying, there's a propensity, and I've worked in many of these companies, that the receptionist is exceptionally hot, and she's exceptionally dumb. And what I mean by that is her intelligence does not match her physical beauty. I mean, it's breathtaking. Like, <clears throat> dude, when they walk to the water cooler or to get some coffee, bro, um, if you're not deeply... Uh, entranced in a very difficult problem that you're trying to solve all eyes will be on her and you you can even hear guys stop breathing for a fact they stop talking because they're fine also um, I found that the sales uh, reps and the marketing reps are extremely attractive females right that's why they send these, these attractive female sales reps into these companies because they know the engineers are lonely they don't get a lot of female attention so if the woman can touch the guy and laugh at his jokes that aren't funny and, and, and invade his personal so, oh, 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 she can get a sell, right? So anyway, <clears throat> this receptionist, we're going to call her Betsy. So Bob sees a receptionist every day. He comes in uh, through corporate parking, which is down the stairs, um, subterraneally, like in the basement, right? It's one of those underground parking complexes, very nice security gate. you got to have a key fob to get in. So he parks down there. He comes up on the elevator. And what happens is when you come up from the basement, you have to go to a, a another elevator for security purposes. You know, you have to, have to authenticate who you are. So where the reception is, there's a security guard as well. So you have to go from the one elevator that gets you into from parking into the building to another elevator, which is it's just across the floor. But just like I said, for security purposes. But when you cross the floor, the receptionist is there. She's very beautiful. So Bob... Comes from parking every day, sees Betsy. Good morning, Betsy. Good morning, Bob. How are you? And she's just, man, so sexy, right? So then Bob goes, hey, man, she smiles at me a lot. She always says good morning, which is her, do her job, right, guys? Receptions are paid to be friendly and bubbly and, and, and uh, you know, engaging, right? So she's just doing her job, but Bob misconstrues that she likes him. So he um, says, hey, Betsy, would you like to go out for an ice cream sometime and Betsy's like sure Bob Cause, you know most hot girls even if they have a boyfriend or a significant other or a lover or friends with benefit or a live-in partner or even if they're married just so we're clear guys they're always on the prowl to upgrade or monkey branch or practice hypergamy and I, ha I have videos on that but I wanted to give us um, common words that we will use the remainder of this video so girls are just remember this girls are always looking to upgrade so you should be too anyway so Betsy agrees to go out with Bob and this is a true story just the names have been changed to protect the innocent and naive so um, Bob goes out with um, Betsy so check it out guys after work he takes her out for drinks and then which leads to dinner right and then which leads to a movie so then Betsy has a good time Bob has a good time and they're sitting in a movie you know she touches his thigh occasionally and then Bob drops her off and just for the clarification of this like I said it's a true story since they both work in the same corporate building Bob is a gentleman he goes hey there's no need for you to take your car and meet me anywhere I'll just we'll just meet in the parking lot the corporate parking lot I'll take you out and I'll drop you back off because I got a security key fob your car will be safe you know you don't have to let me know where you live blah 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 right so then end of, of that evening Bob has easily spent about to get two hundred dollars bro and if you if you don't date a lot and you 
question my mathematical abilities just get out a calculator dude and just calculate the average woman uh, drinks between two and four drinks and so if you're matching her you do the math that's easily like a hundred bucks any dinner worth its weight when you have a hot girl with you it's gonna be about thirty bucks a piece bro that's sixty bucks then the tip and then you gotta add the whether you have like some sparkling water or ginger ale or soda whatever and then you add in the movie which is about fifteen bucks between 12 and 15 bucks a piece depending on what city you go to plus the popcorn so you can see it's easily going to be a $200 night so he drops her off at the corporate parking and you know she's getting out of Bob's car and gives him a kiss on the cheek right and the reason I became privileged to this I used to work 16 hour days because I was looking to um, climb the corporate ladder and to become a millionaire and the high-tech industry right which is you're very well compensated for your efforts so I didn't mind working 12 uh, 14 16 hours so I'm coming down into the parking lot because I've ended a 16 hour day so as I'm walking to my car I see Bob and Betsy which you know it happens a lot like you know you might have these HR policies where it's like oh you shouldn't fraternize at work whatever okay right on man rules are meant to be broken and it happens a lot because when you come to understand this in the workforce, you spend more time at work than you do at home with your family, your friends are, you know, off when you when you count it up, right? Eight hours, let's say eight hours a day at work. It's 40 hours a week, right? There's only 16 waking hours a day. So you got the eight hours a day at work. Let's say you commute to work like most people. Let's just say, and I'm going to be conservative here, let's say you commute 30 minutes each way. Uh, and that's an hour, that's that's nine hours right there, and then you gotta prepare for work, whether you prepare your meals or your outfits, right, or your presentations. That's another couple hours. So then um, take into consideration you gotta prepare your meals, do laundry, shower, all of that stuff, exercise. You only have so many discretionary hours per day compared to the eight hours of mandatory at work if you just work 40 hours a week. Some of us work 50, 60, hours a week right 70 80 right so anyway I'm coming down the corporate elevator to the garage I see Betsy get Bob a kiss on the cheek and he's just ready to bust through his skin he just uh, then he gives me that sees me and he's got a smile like hey I got a date man with hot Betsy man he's just so excited right so um, next day you know of course engineers that don't have a social life and uh, don't get me wrong, any of you MGTOW, Manosphere, Red Pill, and Board Men, I am not poking fun at engineers. I am not stereotyping them. I am sharing with you gentlemen my experience. So my experience is my reality. I'm not saying all engineers are geeky, nerd, um, introvert, lack of social skills. I'm not saying that by any means. I'm saying a large propensity of those types are engineers. I am being an engineer. I'm not one of those types, but I've been working in this field for over 20 years in various countries and locations in the United States. So I'm, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty secure in what I'm saying. So being a Bob lacks a social group, most engineers befriend other guys at work just like they date girls from work. So Bob is saying to me and a couple other guys, like, hey, I went out with Betsy, man. It was neat. She really likes me, man. And we got a second date, right? So let's just say that they went out that Friday, then they plan another second date for the following Friday. So follow follow this, Bob. I mean, guys, Bob then goes and gets flowers and candy because he's been acclimated or assimilated to the bullshit the American Western culture has given us that we must appease the woman, we must entertain the woman, we must pay for the woman's time, right? So how do you pay? You bring gifts. The subservient person always gives gifts to the more dominant person, right? The person of lesser value appeases the person with higher value. So Bob goes out, gets some really expensive flowers, man, and some candy, you know. And then he has a surprise for Betsy when they get off work. He's got in the car. They repeat the drinks, dinner, 
movie. Because Betsy likes that, right? She likes the attention. She likes that she gets to not be home bored on a Friday night. Right? But what Bob doesn't understand, how come he never gets a Saturday night ding? How come he never gets a Sunday night ding? Hmm, interesting. Well, that's for Bob to ponder. So they go out again and everything and have a wonderful time. Brings him back, gets a kiss on the cheek, and I'm coming down the corporate elevator again. Right? So let's fast forward now to a month later. 30 days later, guys, let's just say. Every Friday they're hooking up for a date, right? Except it's not just drinks, dinner, and a movie. He's taking her to concerts, man. He is taking her out dancing. Because when most hot girls like to dance and be seen, they're social butterflies, right? And, um, you know, Bessie's a receptionist. So she's making between uh, twenty five and 35000 a year. Bob, of course, thinking, you know, mid-six figures, right? So she's like, she has some car problems. Bob pays to get her car fixed, right? She wants to get her hair done. If she wants a new outfit. That's the only uh, Saturday date that Bob gets. It's a Saturday early afternoon to take her out shopping so that she can get some nice outfits and shoes and get her nails and hair done so she can look sexy for Bob, right? Sexy for Bob, right? So then she has a problem and, uh, you know, she went to Vegas and overmaxed her credit card, and then she can't pay her rent, so then Bob's going to pay her rent. So we're going to fast forward this two months, guys. But follow me. I'm still the 16-hour-a-day dude because I'm aggressively climbing the corporate ladder. I'll tell you my story later, but just follow this story here. So I come down into the corporate um, parking lot, and Bob drops her off again, right? And then Betsy makes an excuse of, oh, she's got to run upstairs and get a final report because she's got to go home and do some markups or whatever. So, you know, so I'm fumbling around in my car. So then when she comes back down, a car pulls up, a different car, and it's got a questionable character in there and he's got a wife beater shirt on. What if you don't know what wife beater is it's one of those t shirts without the sleeves on it, right? And uh it's tattooed up man. Saggy pants, really thin dude. Tattoos on his neck and fully sleeved, right? Dark shades on this at night. And so then Bessie walks up to the car and he's like, Man, what took you so long? Get in the fucking car and then you hear him arguing and stuff and everything and then Bessie gets in the car and instead of giving him the kiss on the cheek she gave Bob she performs fellatio right there in the corporate parking lot now unbeknownst to them like I said I was fumbling in the seat of my car so I was bent over like you know you try to get some stuff out of the glove compartment and some stuff falls on the floor or maybe you got some reports under the passenger seat right of, the front passenger seat of the car, so you're kind of bent over the side. You're not really hiding from anybody. You're trying to get your stuff, so you look up and you see her head bopping up and down. He's like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah," and then he comes in her face and her hair, right? And then you hear him tell her, "Hey, you know what? Like, next time you go out with that guy, you make sure you get some money because I need some money." So all these stories she's been telling Bob about how she needs her rent paid or her hair or nails done or her car problems. She's just basically making up a story to get money from Bob to give to Fred. So here we go. It's uh, three months into this quote unquote relationship and Fred says to me, hey man, like I don't understand. Like I really like Betsy and um, all I get is a kiss on the cheek. Like we never have sex. And so uh, Bob has said to Betsy that he wants to not just go to first base, second and third base. And she says, hey, I want to take it slow and get to know you, right? And this is three months into it. Paid her rent once, car payment twice, getting car fixed. 
hair and nails done, two hundred dollars a date. Whereas Fred is in and out of prison, can't keep a job, beats Betsy on a regular basis, and he sometimes has a drug addiction. So the moral to the story, guys, is that um, women will manipulate and use sumps, simps, chumps, and wimps as doormats because basically the real men in their lives, whether you, what I say about a real man is a man who knows that his place is to dominate women. I'm not talking about his socioeconomic status, his ethnicity, his educational level. I'm talking about a mindset where you understand your role as a man, which is not taught has to be experienced. Your role as a man is to dominate and lead women. It's just the way it is. Anything other than that is not natural. You understand? It's like um, taking a dolphin, right? And having it run a marathon on the land in the Sahara Desert. Something is wrong with this picture, right? So, the point I'm making is Women regularly have these nice guy orbiters in the friend zone with no benefits. The only benefit is you get the pleasure of paying for her time and her company and wasting your fucking time. And the remedy to this, guys, is this. Just remember this, this one rule. When you're dealing with a woman, no matter how hot she is or how sexy or beautiful or how much you think she's filling you. Let's remember this one rule. If a woman does something to you that one of your friends, doesn't even have to be a long-term friend, it can be even a guy you met. It's just a guy, it's not even a guy you look up to, it's just a guy you associate with sometimes, maybe regularly. But it's something that if he would do that, you would check him, then you have to check her as well. And that's how you stop being a doormat to women. What you have to do is you have to treat them as equals. And what I mean by that, even though they're not equal, I'm saying you have to have what's called fair, unbiased treatment. Meaning that if you won't accept this from a male friend of yours, a brother, or male cousin, or an associate or acquaintance, do not accept that treatment or behavior from a woman, no matter how hot or sexy. And the reason being is that and I'll, I'll be honest here, I'm being a little bit vulnerable because I want you to follow me that I haven't always been the alpha male bad boy dominator of women. It was a... It was a very painful um, five-year process that led me to where I am today. And that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. So either one, I can circumvent you having to experience what I did or B, if you have... I can help you, I can show you a pathway out of it, or C, um, you can totally avoid it altogether. But, um, I used to be of the mindset like, oh, you know what, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to be a, treat a girl really nice and, and let her do things to me that I find disrespectful or not right, just so I can get her in bed. And once I get her in bed, and I'm going to have her give her such performance in the bedroom that she's going to then respect me. And I gotta tell you something, that never ever worked. It never worked, bro. Just like trying to be friends first or the nice guy thing. It never works because in a woman's mind, right? You gotta remember this. You gotta finish like you start. And, you know, people always talking about the five second rule and PUA and all that. Well, in human psychology, especially female psychology, there's a five second rule, right? It's got nothing to do with approaching this. The five seconds that a woman assesses you and she knows immediately whether A, you, she finds you someone interesting or attractive that she'll talk to, B, you're just some simp she's going to use and abuse and mock all over, D, you're just some guy she's going to ignore, or E, you're a guy that she will willingly go into the men's room and suck your fucking cock, regardless who else is in the men's room. She will willingly be your sex slave, your personal whore, your private slut. Women make that assessment in five minutes. I'm going to give you an example and I want you to remember this guys. So all of us have to go to the mall for women it's a fucking sport. It's a fucking hobby. It's a fucking way of life. 
when I need underwear or socks, guys, or even some shoes or some pants or a shirt, whatever, if I can get in the mall, big dog, maybe I'll go with a friend sometime by myself. I don't always got to be in, in, a, in a group or a pack like women tend to travel. So I get to the mall, whether it's J.C. Penney's or Ross or Macy's, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I go in there and I say, oh, where's the clothes section? I go in there, pick out a pair of pants, maybe two, a shirt, match it up. I'll have the um, the person that works there, the associate, I don't know what their name is. I'll have them color coordinate my stuff, get a pair of shoes, belt, underwear, socks. I'm out of there, man. One hour max, right? That's maximum. And I'm being... Uh, I'm being conservative here. It might even be 45 minutes, 30 minutes, just depending on how many people are in the mall. But <coughs> the point I'm making is you're walking from store to store and you see hot girls, let's just say for the sake of this discussion, I want to say from cute to pretty to beautiful to sexy to gorgeous girls. When you're walking, you see this plethora of women. And I just want you to do this social experiment with me. Look everybody in the eye as you walk past them. And what you're going to notice very sh quickly is that, A, a lot of hot girls aren't even giving you eye contact. B, if the beautiful or pretty girls are giving you eye contact, it's very fleeting. Or C, um, the eye contact you're getting from the fat, ugly fucking horse, um, you don't want it anyway. <laughs> right. But the point I'm making is women assess you long before you see them. Women are like predators, man. People think they're prey. They're predators, man. We're the prey. Women got better vision, hearing, senses, and smell, so they see us before we see them. They already assessed by the way you carry yourself, your body language, the way you walk, the way you're dressed, your facial expression. They already assess if you're in the market to fucking hit that vagina, right? So that's one thing you gotta understand. So when you meet a woman, whether you're a PUA or a MGTOW or a fucking Manosphere or fucking Red Pill, whatever the fuck you call yourself, if you're a man who enjoys the company of women, you got to finish like you start. So from the very beginning, you have to let her know that you're a man that has boundaries. You are a man who has, um, uh, what is the word here I want to use? Uh, well, you just won't take any, you're choosy, you're picky. There's a word for it, guys. Oh, standards. Ha <laughs> ha, standards, right? You're a man with standards. So what that means is not just the woman's looks or her intelligence or personality, but also how the fuck she interacts with you. And if you can remember this one rule, guys, trust me when I tell you, your life will be a lot better because, first of all, I want to get this straight. You being a doormat, a nice guy, friend zone, any of that bullshit that you've been sold that doesn't work, it doesn't get you anywhere. And I'm going to tell you why. Women do not respect guys that they walk all over, guys that kiss their ass, guys that do whatever the fuck they want. They don't. They don't. And I've seen some, I have some guys that are, I got some friends that are manly men, dude. I even have friends that are professional athletes, man. And bodyguards and even bartenders and bouncers and various professions where, they dominate men, but every guy has his one woman that can get to him. Then don't be fooled. You know, just like when you're a teenager, the one girl you would have that would give you wet dreams, those nocturnal missions, right? If you ever meet her in real life, trust me, guys, it's no joke, man, because they have a power over you. But even manly men sometimes meet their master. What you have to do is you have to early on establish that you're going to treat them fairly and unbiasedly. So if it's something that a friend of yours is not allowed to do, a male friend, then don't allow the female to do it. And once you can establish that type of a relationship, you will no longer be a doormat. You will be respected because when a woman sees you as a doormat or a simp or a chump or an orbiter or a friend zone, platonic friend zone, you have no respect and she's just using you. But when a woman sees you and it's not about you being an equal. Let's get this straight. A woman has to look up to you. She has to revere you. She has to honor you. She has to respect you. And know that you are a man that doesn't take shit from her or anyone. And I'm not going to say it's an easy path. But it's, it's got to start with the women in your life. you got to start by saying 
know and let them know what you will and will not put up with. And any behavior that you will not take from a friend, don't take it from a woman. And more importantly, a lot of PUAs disagree with this, and I don't give a shit. But more importantly, you have to verbalize it. So I'll give you an example. Let's just say I was Bob. First of all, I don't dip my pen in company. What does that mean? I don't mess with women that I work with. I just found that it is. It shows that you live in a world of scarcity. Also, you don't have a well-rounded life. You don't have a social. It says a lot of negative things about you that um, I personally I live in a world of abundance. I don't have to, um, you know, choose from the slim pickings at work. I, no matter how, how hot a girl is, let's say she's a 15 on the scale of 110. Let's say she is a 15 rock star. Like, um, I like Scarlett Johansson. I think she's sexy, man. But, you know, everybody's got their own taste in women. But let's say I got a woman at work that looks like Scarlett Johansson, walks like her, talks like her, everything. And I'm going to tell you the truth, guys. I've traveled a lot. I've been all over, not all over the world, but I've traveled to different parts of the world. And you might see a Scarlett Johansson in the United States, but you can go to Sweden or... Um, France or Spain or Russia or Ukraine or even South America, man. They got some women that are so beautiful of the same Scarlett Johansson level, but they're more acquiescent, meaning that they have a whole different mindset. They don't, they don't just walk around like they're so beautiful and stuck up that you're not in their league. They're more Oh, you got a job, you're healthy, you're a caring man, you know, you're a hard worker, you got good moral values, and you are they're not out of your league, they're in your league, right? So, no matter how hot a woman is at work, I know that there's a mold, and I found this out one time when I went to LA, I was trying to get into some uh, extra work to do movies, so they had an ad for guys six foot four, um, above uh, 200 pounds, muscular, light eyes, whatever. You know, and I fit. I went down there, and there was like fifty other guys for that casting call. And when I was in L.A., I, I had this dream girl that, uh, you know, I never got to um, be with her because she, at the time, I wasn't a six-figure guy. I was more like making, I don't know, minimum wage, right? But um, I never got to. She didn't think I was worthy of her. But I'm in L.A. I met two other girls, looked just like her, but were better. It's kind of like that movie, Bedazzled, where the guy's chasing the one girl at work, but then at the end of the movie, he, this girl moves into his apartment complex, looks just like the other girl, but it's way cooler, right? L look the movie up if you haven't seen it. It's a funny movie, and I think it'll help you understand the point I'm trying to grab home. But remember this. Never accept behavior from a woman you would not accept from a male, another male in your life. And then secondly, verbalize it to her, and back to the story, Let's just say I was Bob, which I'm not, but let's say I wanted to ask Betsy out. What I would tell Betsy is like, hey, Betsy, after work, let's go off to happy hour. You know, say I want to talk to you about some things, you know, not work related. So I'm taking her out to happy hour, and I'm going to establish early on, hey, first round's on me, next one's on you. We're just hanging out. So very early on, she's knowing like, okay, OG Silverback, he's got boundaries. He doesn't operate in scarcity, and you know he's he's uh he stands for or he he says what he means and he means what he says. He stands for something, right? So early on in her mind, she's knowing I'm nothing like Bob. OG Silverback's nothing like Bob, and I'm more in the category of Fred. Except I'm not in and out of prison. I don't have tattoos all over my neck and face and arms, and I don't have a drug addiction and I don't, I don't beat women, you know. So, I think there's a middle ground. You don't have to be the nice guy, bitch boy, doormat Bob, but you don't have to be the fucking asshole, bad boy, loser, jerk, motherfucking Fred. <laughs> you can be OG Silverback. And you, know, you just stand for something. You let women know what you will and will not tolerate. And those who do not acquiesce to your demands to respect your boundaries, man, you eject. So until next time, guys, um, I'd like you to thumbs up the video and share it because this information is important because a lot of men are now confused because of women's live and feminism. They don't know whether to open the door for a woman to give a woman compliments, you know, 
they don't know how to interact with women. So what they do is either they err on the side of being a total doormat bitch boy, just having women walk all over them, or like I said, they become the total asshole jerk. And I'm not saying that's bad. Like if you're going to err on any side, err on the side of being the asshole jerk, because your life will be much better. <laughs> You'll be in control of your life. You feel much more satisfied with yourself. Whereas erring on the side of being a doormat bitch boy, because at the end of the day, nobody feels good about being a doormat, right? So, uh, thumbs up the video, share it. Also, more importantly, leave any comments there in the comment section about what you thought about it. And then, uh, whether good or bad, <coughs> excuse me. And then if you have any suggestions on other videos you'd like me to uh, discuss, feel free to email me at ogsilverback at 971 at gmail.com or just put it in the comment section. Until next time, remember this. He who doesn't stand for something will fall for anything. OG Silverback out.